a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in Exploring ETFs. Hi everyone, welcome to Exploring ETFs. I'm Nina Mishra and today we are talking about uranium and uranium ETFs which are going nuclear this year. So uranium prices are up over 30% year to date and they are close to their highest level in 12 years making uranium the best one of the best performing commodities this year uh, though they are still below levels that were seen before the Fukushima a disaster in Japan which led to a loss decade for nuclear markets because Japan and some European countries started decommissioning their nuclear plants after that disaster. Now, uh, demand for uranium has been rising lately because of renewed interest in clean alternative sources of energy because governments around the world, they are trying to tackle climate change and also reduce their dependence dependence on fossil fuels, particularly Russian fossil fuels after the war in Ukraine. Uh, uranium, uh, which is used in nuclear power plants, is one of the cleanest ways to produce electricity, but nuclear energy currently accounts for just about 10% of global electric generation. And in advanced countries, including the US, it is about 20%. Now, uh, nuclear energy is making a comeback because uh, uh, new reactors, new nuclear power reactors are coming online, be being connected to the grid, and uh, many existing reactors are extending their operational li licenses. Uh, and in Japan, where nuclear power accounted for almost 30% of electricity generation before this Fukushima disaster is also bringing power plants back online. And small uh, nuclear reactors, uh, uh, they are also making some progress towards commercial, commercial viability. Uh, now, on the other hand, this uh, big supply shortage because uh, of underinvestment over the past more than a decade. Uh, and uh, uh, the irony is, even though Western governments are trying to reduce uh, their dependence on Russia for fossil fuels, they're still dependent on Russia for their uh, uranium needs. So Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, which are two former Soviet allies for two former Soviet republics. They are among the biggest uranium producers. They together account for about 50% of world's mine supply. And uh, Russia and Niger, uh, all together, they account for about 60%. That is according to Bloomberg. And the recent coup in Niger is adding to those uh, supply headaches. Now, uh, in addition to mine supply, Russia is a big player in uranium conversion and enrichment market. So Russia accounts for about 45% of conversion and enrichment uh, market. And uh, so far, the U.S. government hasn't banned imports of Russian nuclear fuels, even though they are bills, both in the House and the Senate, uh, though experts say that a full ban is unlikely, but that is again head heading to uh, supply headaches. Now, uh, the uh, the administration, the U.S. government is trying to uh, encourage nuclear power production and the Inflation uh, Reduction Act includes billions in production credit to existing nuclear plants. Now, let us take a look at three ETFs that investors could use if they believe in this nuclear renaissance. So the first one I'm highlighting is the biggest one. It is by Global X. Uh, the ticker symbol is URA, has 2.1 billion in assets and charges 69 basis points expense ratio. If you want to learn more about this ETF, you can go to the code page on zax.com read our research articles, 
and using the link you can go to global x web page for this particular etf and look at the holdings and what exactly it does so it holds uranium mining and uh, companies that produce nuclear components if you look at the top holding it is very top heavy about more than 23 percent in chemical uh, and uh, then it, it has about 11 percent weight in the sprout physical uh, etf which is a canadian etf uh, physically backed uh, by physical uranium so it actually holds physical uranium and uh, uh, it's uh, it's as, as i mentioned it's traded in canada not in the us so uh, looking at the sector energy companies account for almost 60 percent and then industrial etc uh, and uh, if you look at uh, the country exposures you will see that canada accounts for about 48 percent us accounts for about 10%. So you will get a lot of international exposure in these ETFs, so you should be aware of that. Now, the second one I'm highlighting is the best performing ETF year to date and over the past year. So it is up more than 40%, 42% this year. Uh, the ticker symbol is URNM and it is by Sprott. It has an expense ratio of 83 basis points and has 1.3 billion in assets under management. Again, we can go to the code page on zax.com. I did a podcast with uh, Sprout some time back. You can listen to that. You can read our articles. And if you go to Sprout web page, they have had some excellent research on uh, uranium and nuclear energy. So it's worth reading if you are interested in the space. Uh, so it uh, focuses on uranium miners and physical uranium companies. So if you look at the holdings, uh, you will see similar holdings, but not as top heavy as the Global X product. So Chemico is about 16%. Then you see other companies and uh, the spot physical uranium trust, which I mentioned earlier, which actually holds physical uranium, that accounts for about 13% of the portfolio. If you look at the country exposure, uh, this has the most international exposure of the three. The US accounts for less than 7% of the portfolio. Canada is about 56% of the portfolio. The third one that I'm highlighting is by Renek. Uh, so this holds global nuclear energy companies, uh, 61 base, basis points expense ratio, and this is the smallest of the 308 million in assets. So let's go to the code page on sax.com and using the link, the Venic web page for this ETF. So this is slightly different from the other two. So this holds uh, uh, uranium mining companies and uh, also construction uh, companies that are involved in construction, engineering, maintenance of nuclear power facilities, and companies that are involved in the production of electricity from nuclear sources. So if you look at the holdings details, you will see that it is a bit different. Uh, so uh, these are the top holdings. And if you look at the portfolio, you will see that utilities account for a major portion of the portfolio. The energy is the top uh, weight, but utilities also account for a lot of weight in the portfolio. So you will see the holdings like uh, Constellation Energy Public Service Enterprises, uh, PG and P PG and E Corporation, which uh, uh, you will not see as two upholdings in the other two ETFs. And looking at the country exposure, this has about 41% expo exposure to the US and rest is international. So highest US exposure in this particular ETF. Uh, so you can read um, about these ETFs and decide which one works best for you if you are interested. And on the last slide, I have the competitive performance over the past year 
compared to the S&P 500 index. So as I mentioned, uh, this broad product is the best performing year to date, as well as over the past year, it is up about 35% over the past 12 months. The Global X product is up about 30% and the Vedic product is up about 32%. And uh, the S&P 500 index after the recent sell-off is about is up about 17% over the past 12 months. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out zax.com slash promo for an interesting offer. Also make sure to subscribe to our, all our videos, our video channels so that you do not miss anything. And I'll see you next week.